Okay, so now we're going to just finish up our mix and then go on the, along in the process of mixing it down, doing a little mastering, and getting it ready to put into iTunes or on a CD or whatever. Okay, so what we need to do is just kind of tweak our mix a little bit. Make sure it sounds good. A little too much delay there. there. Maybe the piano needs to come down a little bit. Okay. And then in, in here we're just gonna we're just gonna kind of fade it out once we get once that piano kind of turns off. So we'll draw a fade in a minute. Okay, so we'll come back to that. So right now, our mix is sounding good. You know, there's obviously more tweaking we, we could do, and I would suggest that you guys, I'm going to provide this session for you, so you go ahead and continue working on this, and you can move everything around and be crazy with it and do whatever you want. Okay, but for right now, we're taking our mix. The levels are good, so we're going to do a little bit of mastering here in the process of mixing. Okay, so usually when you're mixing, you're not going to put any processing on your master here. Okay? That's your master fader. That's your your two channel mix. We talked about that before, okay? So, when you do mastering, what you do is you you mix the whole thing down and then you take and process add some extra processing to just that stereo mix. So, while you're working on a project, you may just want to do that processing at the same time that you're mixing. So, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take and put a multi-channel plug in. We're going to use for dynamics a compressor, a limiter, Maxim. Okay, and Maxim is kind of built for this kind of purpose, for mastering sort of thing. Okay, and so we're going to take this ceiling. We're going to make it negative 0.1 dB, and that's basically saying that we don't want our signal to go over that because if it goes over that, it's going to hit red. Okay, and so remember we talked about compression before. We're going to be turning down the peaks, but the way a limiter works here is it turns da turns down those peaks and it boosts everything up, but it just will never let you go, never let any peaks go over zero. Okay, a compressor is a little less, a little bit more forgiving, whereas a limiter is like a compressor on steroids. Steroids, it's just gonna, it's not gonna let anything pass over. Okay, so as we bring this threshold down, we're gonna basically at the same time we're going to bring the threshold down of what peaks we're going to turn down and we're also going to do our makeup gain at the same time. Okay, so watch how this gets louder or notice. Okay, so you see how that got a lot louder but we never went over red, okay? And so that's because we were just turning down those peaks and bringing everything else up. Okay, so once you get it to a nice setting, you can have your mix. Nice and loud and everything like that. Okay, and then we can go over and we can draw our fade in our master here. And this is a little bit of automation, which is a little bit beyond what we've talked about. But we're simply going to click and throw a dot in there click and throw another dot and I'm holding the command key on my my Macintosh computer here it would be the control key on a Windows computer to force my smart tool to give me the grabber to draw a click there a, a break point is what's called I'm going to grab that second break point and just drag it down and now this is going to be fade out. Okay, and then now another important aspect of preparing to mix down is you want to define the area that you want to mix down. So I want to take and say, you know, I want it to end right there, but I want it to start right there. Okay, so start at the beginning there and end there. So I've made a selection. You see I've got this blue mark in or down arrow and a blue mark out or up arrow. 
Okay, and that's going to say when I mix down, this is going to be the length of my mix. Down. Okay, so that's my length. So now I'm ready to bounce it down. So I'm going to go File, Bounce to Disk. That's going to ask me a bunch of these questions here. Okay, so first of all, I've been working with WAV files. I want to keep it a WAV file. I could make it an AIF. AIFF, or I could change it to an MP3. If I had video on my session, I could mix it as a QuickTime, or I, I could just mix it as a QuickTime audio file, too. Okay? I'm going to keep it as WAV, and I'm going to change it to interleave, stereo interleave. So that's going to, instead of making two separate files, which is what this multiple mono would be for, I'm going to actually make these two files kind of interleaved into one. So it's still a separate left and right track. But when I see it on the disk, when I see it on the computer, it's going to be one file, okay, with those two tracks incorporated into it. And that's what we need to do in order to take it and put it into iTunes or 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 Windows Media Player or 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 on a CD or something like that, okay. So it needs to be that in order to to just grab that one file instead of a left and a right file, okay. Then we want to change it to 16-bit, okay, because a a CD and mp3s and everything we're using 16-bit audio and 44.1 which we talked about at the beginning we we chose that because we were going to end up getting our our music put on a cd or or, or an mp3 or something like that okay and we want to convert after bounce it, it just makes a little better quality less errors okay and we hit bounce and it's going to ask us where do we want to put this okay the default location is going to be the audio files folder of our project so we are going to go ahead and, and put it in on our desktop. You see, there's our project anyways, but we're going to put it on the desktop to make it easier. Okay, and we're just going to call this Cool Jam, just for fun. And hit save. And now it's going to mix down. Okay, so it's going to count back, telling us it's mixing down. goes okay and that echo you heard there at the end that was just because it was kind of coming back to our session as it is it's not going to be in the recording okay and uh, it's kind of it's kind of interesting why that happens but anyways it's not going to be in the mix down so you don't have to worry about that you saw how it processed it afterwards so now let's go ahead and tab over command tab gets us between our applications in Mac here to the finder and there we are on the desktop, Cool Jam. Okay, and there it is, 55 seconds long. The bit rate is 40 is 14.11. That's the 16-bit um, and 44.1 data rate. Okay, 9.8 megabytes, and it's ready to take this file right here. Could be could be put into a CD burning program, or could be taken directly into iTunes, and we can we can burn a disc right from there. Okay, so we're ready to share this with the world. We could just send this straight to somebody, our cool jam, and and there we go. We would have our project all sent off. And that is our basic Pro Tools tutorial. So we've got you started off. We've got a project completed. And now you should be ready to work with this yourself.